Hi there, I'm going to show you how to paint this lovely painting, Santa's sleigh in the sky. I did this on an 11 inch by 14 inch stretched canvas and the first thing that I did was trace this circle for the moon. So this is one of those plastic palettes. Um, most of them are about the same size. It's uh, relatively six and a half inches in diameter. And all I did was use a pencil to trace that circle. So this is going to be our moon in the painting. And then this is the brush that I'm using for about 95% of this painting. This is a number eight round brush. I picked this up at Michael's. It is a Royal and Langnickel Zen brush. And if you look at my blog post, there's a link for exactly what, where you can find this brush. So it gives you the link to where it is. If you don't have the round brush and you still wanna do this painting, you can use a three quarter inch flat for this step. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna load my palette with titanium white. And then you also saw me load my brush with water. Um, and also this color is ultra marine blue. So titanium white and ultra marine blue. Um, you just want to make sure that you load it with the water, but pat it dry because this is, it's got thick brushels, so it holds a lot of water. So you don't want a lot of water on your brush, but it needs to be, um, wet enough to get the paint to flow. Okay. So I loaded it with the titanium white and I'm going to paint a circle around the moon. I am painting on the outside of the line that I drew and um, it's, I'm pressing kind of firm with my brush. So the bristles are going down to make a, a thick stroke. Um, there's paint on um, the pretty much all of the bristles right now because I'm pressing relatively firm. And that is what I'm doing. So I'm doing the whole sky with this pretty large round brush. And I'm gonna go pretty far out here uh, almost to the left and right sides of the canvas. Uh, we're doing this sort of swirly sky that you see in a lot of my paintings where there's a moon and it's super bright next to the circle and then it fades to this darker color. And so that's what I'm doing. I, I'm setting it up for that. And if you've done paintings like this before, it becomes um, easier as you go. And so um, the tip of this brush is then dipped in ultramarine blue. So you saw me dip just the tip in that. And I'm just gonna kinda lightly get that to blend in there. Ultra's a dark color, so it's gonna spread pretty fast. And you wanna just be kinda gentle at first when you apply it to the canvas and kind of test the waters and then um, you're going to blend it. So as you get closer to the moon, you want to kind of hold your brush lightly so that the blue doesn't take over. But essentially we're blending the color and uh, we blended it just now to get the white to blend with the blue so it turned into a light blue closest to the moon and then as we go outwards we're going to be adding more ultramarine blue less white to your brush okay so you can kind of see what's happening right here and the corners right there have the um the darker ultramarine blue and i'm just being very gentle when i paint closer to the moon because I don't want the blue to take over. So brush very lightly. And then um, if you need to, you can dip your brush back in the white and then you can go back over. Um, it's just if you keep dipping it in the white and if you keep going back over and blending too much, it may end up being the exact same color. Okay. Um, there is a, a snow hill in this painting and you don't really need to worry about that right now. So we're just gonna go ahead and kind of cover up most of this canvas. Maybe leave a little bit of space on the bottom, but we're not gonna be worried about our hill right now. This area that is down here is going to get darker because it's further from the moon. And you will just need to load your brush in more ultra here and you can see what's happening the blues getting darker and darker and f getting uh, further from the moon 
okay and then i'm going back and i'm loading more of the white in there it kind of that's how you kind of create that swirly looking effect because you add the white you just kind of do a few streaks of white in there and go back with the blue and do a few streaks of blue um, the nice thing about this brush is because it has um, the thickness of it, but the tip of it has, um, you have the ability to create some thinner strokes with your tip. So it creates a, a different style um, than if you were just to use a flat brush for this, for the whole thing. Um, but if you are using the flat brush, you can turn your brush on the side of it to get that thinner looking stroke. So you can kind of still do the same thing. Okay. Um, like I said, I'm going to leave a little bit of space over here on the bottom. I'm actually going to fill it up pretty close. Let's just leave those corners on the bottom left and bottom um, right blank for now. There is some purple in this sky and it is called dioxazine purple. So I loaded my palette with dioxazine purple and I'm gonna make this purple light because dioxazine is such a dark purple, but it makes a very pretty lavender color when you mix equal amounts of white and purple. I don't measure things when I mix, I just grab it on the brush and I grab the other color and I blend it. So I wanna say it's about 50-50 of the colors. Um, to make a light purple and I'm just kind of twisting it on my brush a little bit because I want to do the thinner stroke here I'm just kind of lightly brushing that in there to create some streaks of purple in the sky it adds another color dimension and I can even make that color a little darker just adding a little bit of more dark streaks of purple especially in the darker blue area and it just creates a, a pretty blend of purple and blue in the sky and this moon here it's white um but i am going to go ahead and paint it white if you want to leave it blank you can but i want to keep the same kind of texture going with the paint so i just grabbed the white that was had a little bit of purple in there so i just kind of mixed it up so it turned white again and I'm basically i'm painting this whole circle white you can go in there and add a little few bits of other colors if you want to do craters and then if you need to go in and kind of touch up some areas closest to the moon um, there is a little bit of a blank area right here and that's what I did I just went back in and touched it up a bit so at this point we need to let our painting dry use a hair dryer or just take a little break because we're gonna do the hill. So my video editing skills here happened and my painting is dry now. And I, I am going to paint this hill next. So we have our trees on a hill and I have my round brush, it's all cleaned off. I freshened up my water. So we want a good pure titanium white here and it's about, the height of my hand on its side. So uh, if I take my five fingers and I laid it on the bottom of the canvas, that's about as high as my hill. And so I'm gonna just kind of draw it out here using the brush, and then I'm gonna paint it in solid. So this takes a little bit of time to do because it's a large area, um, but make sure you get a, a good opaque coat of white on there and you shouldn't see any of that blue showing through if you do you may need to go back and add a second coat and in a little bit here we're going to do some wet on wet blending to add a little bit of shadow on the bottom of the snow so dip your tip of the brush this is double loaded it still has the white i dipped the tip in the ultramarine blue and I'm gonna gently just paint the bottom of the ground here with the blue, and then I'm gonna blend it back up in the white. Uh, that's optional if you don't wanna do it. If it looks a little too hard, you don't have to, but it gives the ground a little bit of shadow with the snow. So we have the brightest of the snow on the top and it fades a little bit darker on the bottom. Okay, so I'm gonna rinse off my brush all the way and I'm gonna conquer these trees next. Um, there's three trees in this painting. There's one in the middle, and that's the one we're gonna start with, and they're the, kind of these whimsical looking trees. And I'm gonna start at the top, 
and I'm going to use titanium white and I'm gonna just stroke down with the brush. I'm still using that number eight brush, by the way, and I'm just stroking down with the white to kind of form the shape of the Christmas tree and um, kind of forming the outside, but also filling in the inside part too. And so each row of these Christmas tree branches, I'm painting one row at a time, and each row gets kind of wider as I go down. And um, all I'm doing is I'm just stroking each of these branches down. So from top down, stroke, stroke, stroke. And also what's kind of happening with my brush control is I'm pressing kind of firm at first and I'm just kind of loosening up the brush as I drope down so you get that kind of wispy edge to the, the branch. And so I'm gonna do it again over here. This tree on the right is actually going kind of diagonal and um, doing the same thing starting from the top working my way down, doing each branch. I'm pressing kind of firm at first and I'm just kind of wisping it down so that it kind of goes to a point. And um, I'm using uh, mostly the tip of this brush. This round brush has a very nice tip to it and I'm using mostly that. But when I press harder, you get kind of more of the bristles in it too when you press harder. So you press hard and then you press soft so the tip gets that nice point, okay? And so after I, I form the shape of the tree, I like to go back up and just kind of fill it in. And so the reason why we're doing it white first is because we have this sort of dark background. And if we just did green, it may not show up. So we're kind of priming the tree areas first, getting it white so the green will be nice and bright, okay? And then the one over here on the left is going kind of diagonal the other way. And same technique, starting from the top, working my way down, forming the shape of the tree by painting one roll at a time. And um, as I'm recording this video, I actually just finished making a how to paint a Christmas tree video. It goes into more depth about how to do this. And I also show you three different ways to do it with three different brushes. So make sure if you're watching this video, figure out, um, look for the how to paint three different Christmas tree videos because this that one is uh, actually really kind of cool. Okay, so I loaded my palette with Hooker's Green Permanent. And I'm going to get that white off the brush, kind of dry it. And so I'm gonna do the same thing again, um, but uh, kind of opposite. I'm gonna start at the bottom and work my way up. And you're gonna see what happens when you start at the bottom. You get this layering look going. And I'm gonna do the tree on the left and I'm gonna just do the bottom row of branches. So now that you, it's green, you can really kind of see what it looks like. The white, you couldn't really tell. But I did one roll of these kind of strokes. So I'm um, stroking down for each row. And when you do the next row, they naturally look like they're overlapping each other, okay? And then what I like to do, um, you saw me dip the tip of the brush in the white again, but that's gonna give some color variation when you dip in the white and the green, just a tiny bit of white, and it makes it look just kind of slightly different from the next row. So I dipped it in the hooker's green right there and I'm doing the next row, stroking the row downwards. And you can really kind of see what's happening here. They're overlapping each other because I'm working from bottom to top. Okay, and then more hookers green. And then I'm just gonna keep going, painting each row. Obviously the tree is getting thinner as I go up to the top and I'm using the very tip of that brush. It's a thick brush, but it's got a nice little tip to it so I can paint smaller lines as I get to the top. Okay, and then you can um, get to the top right there. And so you can see what happens with the overlapping thing when I worked from bottom up. We're gonna do the same thing again to all three of the trees, but we're gonna have some kind of fun and add a different green in here. This is Brilliant Yellow Green. 
It's a very light, bright, kind of a lime green. And I'm going to have that color not be all in this tree, but kind of doing this and the hooker's green. So I'm going to start the first row on the bottom with the brilliant yellow green. So same thing, stroking down for the first row of uh, branches. And then I'm going to load it in the hooker's green and I'm going to do my next row. And so what's happening is the dark green and the light green are naturally blending together because they're both on my brush. And I kind of want to just um, alternate using those colors. I'm going to double load it, but I'm going to kind of change the variety, the, the amount of the light green versus the amount of the dark green each time. And the layering effect is happening because I'm working um, bottom up so each row is overlapping the next row and loading it in brilliant yellow green there to get a lighter sort of row and then going back and the next row is hooker's green you could do a pattern you can do green dark green pattern it doesn't look as natural when you do it the pattern way it looks more matte natural when you just kind of load it in different amounts of green each time and so at the very top I actually got a nice little dark shade up there but um sometimes after doing this i'll go back and add a few strokes of the branches just kind of here and there just a few branches that are just kind of sticking out and then I'm touching up the bottom area a little bit too. Okay, so there's my second tree. And then my um, third tree, as I go and add a few more strokes in there on the bottom, my third tree is going to be pretty much the same thing. So um, I'll start with the hooker's green this time. And I'll proceed to use the brilliant yellow green as well. So same technique, going from bottom to top. And the color variation comes from you loading your brush in different amounts of the dark and the light green. And I'm gonna go silent here for just a bit as I finish this tree up. Okay, I'm gonna completely rinse this brush off, get off any residue of white or green or the light green on there. We're gonna do those darker trees that are kind of in the distance. And I'm gonna freshen up my hooker's green. And I am going to use only hooker's green for these trees. So same technique, start at the top, stroke down. We don't have to worry about the layering thing by going bottom up. We're just gonna to go top down and I'm just gonna kind of form the shape of this tree. And we didn't even have to white out the tree in this distance because it's dark and it's back there and we don't really see a whole lot of details in these trees. So I'm gonna do one that is in between both of these trees here. So stroking down, this is just the hooker's green permanent, no other color, um, just a very basic um, Christmas tree. And I'm gonna do one more over here on the left that is kind of peeking out on the side here. Okay, we're gonna do some shadowing next under our trees. And I'm gonna rinse my brush off, but I'm actually gonna keep the water on these bristles because I'm gonna use that water to transform my blue into sort of this watercolor consistency and grab some titanium white. So I am mixing ultra with titanium white and having it be watered down. So that water on my bristles watered that paint down. And I'm gonna gently in zigzag motions under just the three trees in the front, um, I'm gonna do this sort of triangular shape because it's the opposite, it's the shadow. So from the bottom of the tree, I'm just kind of, kind of very, very gently go zigzag left and right, watercolor style, this shadow under these three trees. We don't see the shadow under the three other three in the background, just the three in the front, okay? And just gently kind of uh, mesh it back into the snow 
Um, and it should be very translucent. Uh, it, you should have watered it down enough to where you can really see through that. We didn't lose the snow. It didn't turn into blue snow. It's just a very transparent shadow. And then if you want, you don't have to do this, but if you want, you can go back in and add a few more uh, branches just to make it look like that it is definitely overlapping that shadow. Again, this is uh, optional, but I decided to do that to make it look like that shadow's really under that tree. Okay, so now this is a fun part. This is always my favorite part of these paintings when I get to do the splatter paint with the toothbrush and I dipped it in the water first, but I'm gonna really dry it off here because we don't want it to be uh, very watery splatters. We want it to be a nice consistency. Um, so I'm going to just kind of maybe use my finger to get it on there, but it should be enough to where the titanium white splatters enough to where it doesn't drip and ruin the painting, but it has a very fine specks and it doesn't show up on the camera that well because it's very fine, but this is, this is snow and you can do it on the trees as well. And it also adds to that sort of magical whimsical look of the painting. You can kind of see, you can see it on the darker trees better than the lighter trees. Okay, so go crazy, but don't cover your painting in splatters. We don't want to lose the painting. And then um, when we're done with this, we're going to use a really tiny brush. So look for the smallest brush that you have. Um, I'm grabbing, this is a 10-0 round brush. It's a, got a very tiny point. Um, so I'm not using that big round brush anymore. This is the tiny one. And I'm going to do little snowflakes. So you can do any kind of style snowflake that you want. Actually, I'm going to start by doing some just little dots. So this adds to the variety of the splatters by creating larger dots. We don't know if these are stars or snowflakes. Um, it's up to the viewer to decide that. And um, I'm just going to do that. And then I'll do little asterisks for the um, stars or snowflakes. And I'll just do a few of those here and there. So I have to let you know that there's a part of this painting coming up that just totally got cut off, but don't freak out. Um, when I was recording this video, it started raining. Um, if you follow me, you probably know I live in Phoenix, Arizona. And so it never rains here, but all of a sudden we, we had this really big rainstorm last week. So when I was recording this video, it started pouring and I got super excited. Didn't realize that the video wasn't recording when I did this step right here. So what is happening um, is I am using that same brush to paint little dots to create this sort of garland that's going around the trees and they're going in a zigzag motion. I'm redoing it to show you what I did because it, uh, I did it without realizing it was recording because I was too excited about the rain. And so you basically you do a, um, on this tree on the right, I'll show you. So they're going in zigzag motion, the little dots that are going down the tree in zigzag motions just like that so that uh, we are beginning to decorate the three trees in the front and um, you don't have to do this if you don't want to decorate your trees if you think it looks a little too busy or if you just want plain Christmas trees you can do that um, you can even add snow on the trees if you'd rather just have snow trees but I thought it was fun to do the decorations because Santa Claus is in the sky okay And I'm just adding one more little strand right here. And the ornaments themselves were done with a pouncer. This is the, um, I'm going to use the Martha Stewart pouncer, but I'm loading my palette with primary yellow and cad red. 
So here's the pouncer. This is the tiniest one in the set, the Martha Stewart pouncer set that you can find at Michael's or Amazon. I bought mine from Amazon, but I noticed that Michael's sells them too. And if you load it in the yellow and the white, it creates a brighter yellow. So that's what I did. So you dip it in the white and the yellow and you wanna press and turn. And you don't need a lot of paint on these sponges. With sponges, less is more and it creates um, a, a bold color when you press and turn, kind of a, a faded looking color too. And um, a tip that I found out is using a baby wipe um, to wipe the color off and then a dry towel to dry it, and that will get that color so you don't have to wash your sponge between colors, just use a baby wipe. Okay, so I did the same thing with the red. You want to press and you want to turn to create the ornament. Okay, and then when you switch colors, use the baby wipe to wipe it off. Okay, I, with these pouncers, you can pull the whole sponge off and um, wipe it off, or you could even turn the sponge on the other side. And then, so with the blue, Again, less is more, so sometimes when you dip it, it helps to just kind of go on your palette and kind of wipe some of that paint off after you dip it in the sponge because you don't want a lot of paint on the sponge. The sponge will soak up enough paint as it is. So you want to press and you want to turn to create those ornaments. You can also use your finger or a round brush, so you don't have to use the pouncer. I like the look of the pouncer because it looks more uniform and it helps me so I don't have to paint circles. Okay, and then I even went as far as doing these little kind of, you, you don't even notice it in the painting, but um, I just went back with my 10-0 round and I just did different little colors of dots. Um, just to kind of add to the effect. Very subtle, okay? And um, what Christmas tree would be without a star on top of the tree? So yellow, and I even grabbed a little bit of white in there, but didn't think that was necessary because it's against the white anyway. Um, sometimes when you want your yellow to look opaque and not see-through, you mix it with a little bit of white. Um, but in this case, it wasn't really, you didn't really need to do that. So um, I am painting stars on top of the tree using that little tiny brush. So a little triangle to start with at the top and then do um, just a basic star. Okay, we need to let this dry, and when it's dry, we are gonna use the traceable. I have a traceable that you can print and transfer on your canvas. You can most certainly try to free draw this. I actually free drew it the first go round when I did this painting. It was a little bit of a challenge, but it, was, it didn't turn out too bad. But um, this is just standard size computer paper and I have a sheet of graphite paper that I'm placing underneath it and I'm actually because there's a lot of tracing on this one I'm actually going to use a piece of tape to apply the graphite paper to the traceable. I'm actually just going to put the tape right there on the back. I'm not going to tape it to the canvas because I don't really like taping it to the canvas but sometimes I'll just tape the graphite paper to the traceable itself. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm applying the tape to the traceable. And then I'm going to lay the traceable to where it um, is going to cover the mood. So the width is correct. The height, you just kind of want to make sure that none of them no, that the reindeers are not overlapping the trees. That's just the only criteria. So make sure it's high enough to where none of the trees are going to um, be in the way. Okay, and then you get a pencil and you trace. So this takes quite a bit of time. There's a lot of details in this silhouette and I don't really recommend that you color it in solid. You can, but you really only need to just trace the outline of it and not the um, inside part of the silhouette. So this silhouette was actually found on pixabay.com 
and it's a website with a lot of reference photos and they have a lot of silhouettes on there too and if you ever need something like that you can always search for silhouettes or reference photos and you can use them for the purposes of your painting but I found this silhouette and adjusted the size of it so that it would fit on this canvas on this um, particular composition of this painting. So that's where I found it. And when you're done, lift it off and hopefully you press firm enough to where you can see it enough to be able to paint it in. You're gonna need a very fine brush for this step. I used my 10-0 uh, round, the one that I used for the snowflakes in the sky. Load your palette in some fresh Mars Black. Actually, this is the first time we're using Mars Black, so load your palette in Mars Black. And I like to wet the brush a little bit at first. It helps it flow, but make sure that you're wiping the ferrule so the brush, the water doesn't drip down and pool on your painting. And just paint it in. This step takes quite a bit of time and concentration, but I found it very relaxing because um, you really don't have to think too hard because it's solid black, but at the same time, it still requires some um, concentration, a nice steady, steady hand. You can also use a Sharpie for this step or a black paint pen um, if you need, if you feel like you'll have better control with either of those tools as well. Okay, so I am actually going to go silent here and you can paint with me or watch me paint the rest of this silhouette. And then, oh, I'm gonna say one more thing and then I'm gonna go silent. Um, as I was painting these in, I'm always not one to like wanna paint inside the lines all the time. So I adjusted a few things, like the antlers have had a little bit too much detail on the antlers. So when I painted them in, I kind of simplified it a bit and didn't do all the lines. And pretty much same thing with it. Um, don't get over fixated on painting it perfectly because um, some of my the lines that I drew with the graphite they ended up kind of faded but if you look at the big picture and step back you don't you're not going to really notice that that reindeer's nose looks kind of weird or his leg looks different from the other reindeer's leg that kind of thing just for the most part um, get it to look like the reindeer that you drew on the paper but if it's a little off or not painting and painted in the lines all the way that that's fine don't worry about it okay and i did the reindeers first and the um i don't even know what that's called the the, the string that the reindeers are attached to i did that last that i found that helpful helpful to do that last Okay, now I'm gonna do the string thing from the sleigh and attaches to all of the reindeer. Uh, that's on the traceable as well. Okay, and then as a little added bonus, you could uh, get some red on your palette and do a little red dot on Rudolph's nose. And our painting is finished. This video tutorial has come to its conclusion. I hope that you enjoyed painting Santa's sleigh in the sky with me. Thanks for watching.